Amen. God bless you all. God bless you, everyone who's joining in on live. God bless you, Apostle and Prophetess, to this house. Amen. Shortly, we want to say God bless all of you that are joining in. Amen. This is the fourth Wednesday of the month, so we all know that uh, we set this time aside for uh, the youth to go ahead and go forth and speak. Amen. So I want to welcome the floor. Um, for everybody that's up here on this panel, we're going to start far to the left. We have Brother Giovanni. Say, hey, what's up? What's up? <laughs> all right, next to him, we have Brother Javon. What up? <laughs> My God. And then we have Justin right next. He'll say, what's up? What's that? In there? <laughs> and then, of course, we have uh, Minister Cole, Brother Cole, whatever you want to call him. God bless you. Say, what's up? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen, amen. And, of course, um, pastor, prophet, minister, whomever, Brother Darius, amen. Um, we are all excited to be here. Amen. Uh, but first, of course, before we go forward, we're going to go ahead and pray. Amen. Dear Father God, we want to thank you, Father, for this time that you have set aside for us on today in the mighty name and blood of Jesus, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for just waking us up this morning to see another day to have with you, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, for this time that is set aside, Father God, to talk about you, to talk about your word, to talk about your people, to talk about your blessings, God. We are just all happy to be here in the house of the Lord on today, Father. I thank you, Father God, for the people that are tuning in on live, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for the people that is in this house, Father God. I pray a double blessing on anybody that is tuning in and that is listening in on this program today, Father. I pray right now that you should have full control on today in Jesus' name, that we should not say anything that is out outside of, 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 your, of, of, of your glory, Father God, that we shall stay connected to you no matter what happens today. And I pray that somebody shall be able to hear the word, Father God, and that the word touches them like never before, Father God. But I pray that you have your way on this place, Father God, in Jesus' name, that you speak through us, Father God. I pray deliverance, Father God, it happens in Jesus' name. And I pray that somebody hears you, that the backsliders comes back to you in Jesus' mighty name. But we put this all in your hands. We don't take any self-glory from this, Father God. We pray that we may decrease so that you can increase on the inside of our lives, on the inside of our spirits right now. And we pray a special blessing on today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, amen. So again, I'm happy to be here. Uh, bless God. My voice is a little weathered only because I talk like I ain't got no COVID. Amen. I ain't got no COVID. I talk a lot of my, at my job. So I'm just happy and excited to be here. Amen. Now we have the uh, young men here with us today. Last time we touched on uh, uh, somewhat, well, we tried to touch on it. We had so much to talk about, but last time we touched on the younger generation and how we grew up in church. Amen. But we kind of want to uh, continue this discussion and maybe hopefully end this uh, topic today and next month we start on something new. But um, I wanted uh, to bring a, a few more in to kind of get uh, to get their um, thoughts on what's happening today. But one thing I want to make certain is that we are not doing away with the old generation. Amen or older generation or the generation that preceded us before we got here. Amen. Apostle touched on a subject Sunday and he really touched on how the past generation has set the standard for us to come in and to continue to build upon what has what the foundation has been. Amen. So one thing that we don't want to do is to fall on it's all about us when it's not. Yes, it's about we need to start touching the, the, uh, the children and the younger generation to move forward. But it's not all about us. Amen. Amen. So we're trying to see if we can bridge the gap in between both. Amen. And, if, and of course, if there's anybody out there that wants to have some input or insight on, on, on what today is or what their thoughts are, um, then they can go ahead and put that input inside or leave it in the comments. But we want to focus on how are we able to bridge the gap? Because there is a gap, right? There is a gap between what used to be and what is now. It seems like there's no bridge or there's no uh, mentor that is uh, wanting to grasp us and to connect everything because technology is always growing. Amen. There was technology back then. There's technology now. So how are we supposed to bridge that gap in between the older and the newer generation and, and, and then the generations even after us? Amen. One day we will become old too. Amen. So we don't want to forget that. Amen. So as we start, I just um, want us to start. Maybe we're going to go starting from Brother Gio and down here real quick. But just I want to know what your quick thoughts 
are right now where the church is as of today? Do you think the church um, is continuing to grow or do you think that the church uh, maybe we need to do some things to, that can get us onto the right path. Make sense? And let's try to keep it under a minute and a half. Amen. God bless you. Okay. Um, I think both. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, people, I, I'm trying to figure out what I want to say and how to say it. Um, people talk about a great falling away. I've, we've heard that here many of times. And I think that comes from different aspects. I think that came from COVID, that came from before COVID. I think that talks about a new income and also, um, that's how I interpret that. And then um, what we can do right now is just just try to reach. That's, that's all we can do is just try. Because I think people nowadays, they want to be related to. Because I remember when I was in high school, I had this man just come up to me and shove God down my throat. And at the time I was like, no, I don't, I don't want to hear that. But now I see, I've tried that before, and it, people didn't want to hear that either. So now I figured out, you know, by listening to music, because with music, that's what they do. They relate to their audience. And I, I kind of translated that to church to where that's how you have to be in church. You have to relate to people in order to talk with them. You can say, okay, I understand what you've been through, what you're going through. This is how you can get out of it, or this is how you can go through it. And that's just, that's just what I think. Uh, I definitely agree with uh, what Gio said at the same time. Um, don't forget where you came from. I feel like you, you have a lot of uh, people who are in church who, you know, now where they are in church, they forget where they came from when somebody was out there reaching and teaching them. So when you're talking to somebody and you come in with the, you know, I'm this and I'm that and this and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. You got to remember back when you used to do that or back when you used to do that. So you got to come with a more humble approach, I would say. And I feel like because our generation, man, it's so easy just to tell somebody, hey, let's do this. And all of a sudden it's a trend. So church can also be that trend, too. You know what I'm saying? But you just got to, you know, recognize who you're talking to and what, you know, crowd of people, because also our generation is very they don't want to be the same. They want to be different. So you got to do something that's very, like, explosive, something that's very loud, something that's very, you know, that gets everybody's attention. And I feel like we can do that with church as well. Amen. That's good. Uh, I'm going to piggyback off of what Gio said for a little bit, uh, how he said he related to church to music. But it's like everybody's waiting on a pastor to go bring in everybody. You feel me? But that's not the case. Just like music, you got to hit the streets and give the CDs out. You know, so it's up to the people to go out there and actually go relate to them. You feel me? And actually not drag them, but give them like the little dig with a little carrot. Like, I got something better for you over here. You feel me? Like, come on over here. So it's a lot easier over here. You feel me? Like, that's about it. What I got. Um, I kind of piggyback off of like what all of them said, but I feel like a lot with this generation, there's a lot of sensitivity. Like, people people don't want to, like, if you come at them a certain way, it's like, oh, like, they're trying to say this about me or you. So you really can't talk to them. Like, when we grew up, we watched Passion of the Christ. We watched Left Behind, you know, and that got us. That drug us, and we like, all right, we don't want to go to hell. So, like, but that's but that's how you can reach some, You can, that's how you reach some people. But I feel like when now, things have changed. Like, and especially, I feel like we were getting in a place in church before COVID hit. Like, we were getting in a place where, you know, it was getting back to, like, us seeing signs and mirrors. And that was new to like the younger generation. So they're like, all right, I want to go to church. But then after we had this come and it's like, all right, we don't got to go to church. Now we don't know what to do. Like we watching. I'm not going to watch church online. Like I'm I barely pay attention to Zoom class. Like I'm not going to. You know what I mean? So I feel like there's a lot of sensitivity. And like they're saying, like you have to be sent like you have to be like in discernment to that because you can't just come speaking at them the wrong way because everybody feel like oh like you coming at me like you're not my mom like you're not gonna talk to me like that or you're not gonna say that to me but like when we grew up we had you know father figures like five different father figures in the church they could say something to us and we weren't gonna say oh like you can't say that to me you're not but with that now like i feel like there's been that void to where like they don't have the older generation of church people because it's been like oh like all right y'all do this we do this And there's been really, like, no, like, gap in the middle. Like, I feel like after our age group and, like, 
maybe like five years after that they didn't have that like it was just like you know like y'all do this we do this it's a different generation like y'all come to church we got to do this we got to do this but then you got this church over here who got all young people and they just doing you know whatever is new so i feel like we just kind of have to just be sensitive but at the same time we got to come together because like i said the older generation did lay the forefront for us like that praying 24 7 having prayer gatherings going to revivals like that's what we grew up on like going to five different church services and i didn't care i'm like all right we leave here we're going to bishop solomon smith then we go into the joneses church and then then we're gonna go over there and we're gonna go to somebody else like we love going to church but i feel like now it's like all oh, like you drag